I don't know really. I don't know what I see for lime deer in the future. I just really hope it cleans up, honestly. The reservation I live on, I live on La the Crow Reservation in Latrigas. It's pretty beautiful out there, <laughs> but there's a lot of like bad like vibes and everything that go that are on the reservation. There's, but there's a majority of us that do good things on the reservation that hopefully are role models to the younger generation to grow up like us. I'd like to see the economy go up on the res, in any res, the Cheyenne res, Crow res, doesn't matter. And it'd be nice for both the Cheyenne and Crow res to, uh, you know, get along. <laughs> and uh, I think it'd be make a big change in the economy if they did we got along and helped each other make the economy better and bring some of the money that goes to billing back to the res. I think the economy on the reservations are pretty bad simply because all our money doesn't stay on the res. What keeps you on the reservation? My family and um, it's where I grew up, it's where my roots are. Overall it's a pretty good place to live. I feel like it's home, no other place like it. The culture is more than just the regalia that goes into dancing or parading. The culture is how you grow up. Well, it seemed like everybody spoke Crow when I was younger. Um, uh, it was a pretty peaceful life. We didn't have a lot of the technology that you do today. In fact, um, growing up, we really didn't have um, a TV until I was older and then when we did get a TV it was a black and white and so we didn't have a color TV for for years and years and um, and so it was a really big deal when we finally did get a color TV um, and everybody that I knew really didn't watch too much TV we ended up spending a lot of time outside um, and our summers were typically um, swimming and horseback riding and just running around outside all the time. The reservation when I was growing up was probably a lot simpler than it is now. I grew up on the Crow Indian Reservation in Lodgegrass and we hardly got off the um, got out of the reservation I guess because um, as I was growing up um, my family had one car and if I think of my when I talk about my family I'm talking about my um, two uncles and their kids, because my mom and my siblings. Um, my siblings and my cousins, um, there were 10 of us. And we all grew up in the same, same house under my grandmother's care. We all at, ate at the same table. Um, my grandmother um, took care of us while my uncles ranched and my mother was going to college and working and we only had two cars to the whole family so we hardly got to go any place we just stayed with my grandmother and my mother and my uncles did most of the shopping grocery shopping or whatever and um, we hardly left Lodge grass. Across town in Ashland itself, there was at one time a movie theater, and down under in the basement was a um, bowling alley. In Bernie, there used to be two stores one was the Bernie Cash store and the Bernie Ranch store. 
there was a motel like on Main Street, and there's a place called the Chicken Coop. It's like an arcade. Um, it's pretty awesome. That's where I learned how to play pool, and I learned how to. I learned all the tricks and stuff. So I was like a the chicken coop champ. <laughs> Can beat anybody in town. So it's pretty fun. There was like a couple of arcades actually. I used to work at one. It was on the corner. It was a like a smoke shop, and one of my cousins was the manager, and she would hire me and my friend to clean all the video games for like two dollars and quarters. So we would um, we would just be there all day and clean and play, you know, play the video games. But and do you think it was easier to get a job back then than it is now? There was more opportunities, different places where you could work. The tribe at that time was had a lot of contracts to where it was mainly summer work, working either fence crew or one of the other things that at that time was going was called the peanut crew, which was jobs for kids from, I'd say, 8 to 14. The economy is way down. It's a lot lower than it used to be. From what I see, it's not how everyone else tells me it was in the old days. Like, my grandparents used to say, Crow and Lash Grass were the best towns to be in, and now they're just horrible there. The changes I want to see on the reservation is a lot more young people starting businesses, less people doing drugs and are on alcohol, just kind of making our reservation a better place to live for everybody. People are trying to start business on the reservation. It's harder. It's harder to get a business loan. And it's harder to start a business on the reservation because there's a lot of factors that come into play. It would be nice if we had a lot more um, uh, businesses on the reservation, especially considering we have that um, I-90 corridor right there on the reservation. It just goes right through. And um, we don't have very much um, native-owned businesses on, um, on the reservation. And one of the things that would be really cool is if we were even to have sea stores along um, I-90 in every little town because there's enough of a distance between each town, you know, that that do probably t do pretty well. Honestly, I didn't know what Mon one Montana was till this year. And I feel like if more natives knew about one Montana, it'd be a big, big change in the reservation because it looks like they help out and how they're helping us and connecting us with West. And I think it's really good because it helps. It helps the students realize that they they're able to create things that people want to buy. And then being able to partner with the bigger school, it kind of helps us become more confident with being able to talk to people that we're not used to. When they came down here, they were surprised at how close everyone is around, or like how everyone is around here. And then how we actually all sit together and eat lunch and we all hang out together in the quad during lunch and I think it's a really good it's really good for them because they get a they're able to like see how like smaller communities work with each other and I think what's really neat is that you guys actually get to go out and experience some of that by by talking to people that have um, started businesses and seeing what that's really like and see that that's really possible it takes a plan first you gotta have a plan you gotta have a vision and then you got to have desire to go and make that vision reality. And it, there's a lot of risk involved because <clears throat> people might not believe in your vision. But if, if you persevere through, I think, you know, if it's the right thing at the right time, then that's what it would take to be successful. I feel that One Montana has helped me see how to help the reservation. But if others don't see it, then... I feel that there's not going to be any more reservation if there isn't any other people to open businesses. I want to go to college and come back and be able to say I help the community and have other people help too. And like I want, I would like to see more businesses open up in like Crow and Lodgegrass to where it's not just a ghost town. And it's not just for people, so that people will want to come back to the res.
Okay. <laughs> <laughs>